Hi, I'm John Barnes with WVA, and today I am with Wyatt Olaf, the star of the new film Stay Awake, which is screening this week at the Virginia Film Festival. Wyatt, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. I just want to first congratulate you for the film last night. It was such a powerhouse performance to watch. Um, thank you. You've previously starred in some big projects like It, Guardians of the Galaxy, I Am Not Okay With This. Did anything in your acting process change when transitioning from a large studio project to a more indie-focused film? Honestly, not, not that much. Um, Jamie really curated a, a family on the set, and we all stayed in like the same hotel, so it was very, uh, that was something I'd never experienced before in a bigger project. You know, they set up people all around the city or wherever you're filming, but for this, we were all, and also due to COVID, we were all just stuck there, stuck together. Um, and so that was new, and, uh, but no, nothing, uh, nothing major really changed. I think it was just a little more down-to-earth feeling. Um, and I felt like I just connected with more people on set, which made it more comfortable, which made me feel, uh, made it feel easier to just express myself, I guess. Yeah, yeah. acting is acting. Acting, yes, that is um, true. This film features a lot of complex issues, specifically the repetitive stress of caring for someone who isn't able to get better and they can't really help themselves get better. Uh, one scene that struck me in particular was your breakdown in the hospital elevator. Uh, how did you take care of yourself emotionally after filming these like really gut-wrenching scenes? Yeah, it's a great question. I feel like it's more interesting if I tell you about what's before, if that's mm, cool yeah. as well. So my mom was there with me on set, and um, for a while she, she was the one helping me with a lot of emotional scenes, um, helping me get to that place. And uh, always it was like successful. Um, but that time I was just, I felt like I wasn't good enough and I wasn't like where I needed to be. So I started freaking out. And then my mom was like, you're ready. And I was like, no, I'm not, I'm really not. And then, and she just pulled me out of there and it kind of worked for that scene really well because I was freaking out and that's obviously the scene. Um, but after I do remember uh, being upset with myself, uh, thinking that I could have done better I think, um, but that was that feeling went away after after seeing the cut. I think um, I think it worked really well for the scene, and uh, yeah, I I don't know. There's there's a lot of I'm very hard on myself, and I really just want to improve and be the best I can, especially um, for this project. So I think there was a lot of uh, doubt in, in myself, but I, I think it turned out well. Yeah, and I imagine it was also interesting to have kind of your mom help you with the scenes when your character is also yeah. <laughs> struggling and thinking about his mom. Yeah, absolutely. It's a weird little bit of whiplash, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of people, especially in our generation, can resonate with your character and specifically his struggles with his sexuality. So I was wondering what was it like trying to portray these emotions on screen, visually, especially since you know they're not always explicitly discussed in the film. Yeah. Um, I, I really like the way it's handled in this film, where it's just kind of a part of his character, and it's not like we need to point it out. It's not like we need to make a big deal out of it. It's just who he is. And I think that's, um, I think that's really cool. And it's just a part of his character and him exploring that and him just, okay, he's dealing with a lot of shit in the movie. Sorry, can I swear? I don't think so. My bad, my bad. You're good. <laughs> he's dealing with a lot of stuff in the movie. Um, and that's just another thing on top of it. And that rejection scene is one, or not, it's not a rejection necessarily, but where they're smoking outside and, and he's like, uh, cool if I make a move. Like I, personally, I love filming those scenes because the because I'm uh, very familiar with rejection. So, uh. me and my classmate were screaming in the theater. Really? I was like, he better not. He better not. And I gasped, and all the people around me were like, it was too relatable. I, I don't know why we have to go through that so much. Yeah, it's it's brutal, but it's um yeah. I just love that that twist because it's like, oh, maybe Ethan will get something good out of this, and he doesn't. It's the worst case scenario. Yeah. He's got college though, so that's, that's good. That line was so funny to me coming from the school whenever they would say, um, where's Brown? What's yeah. that? I did, I said the same thing and, and you said that people, I don't, like, people don't know where Brown is. It was refreshing. Okay, I understand. <laughs> Last night you mentioned seeing differences in the final cut in your performance and what was filmed because, you know, you know, they say films made three times, writing, filming, yes. editing. So for you, what's it like as an actor to see kind of how your performance or how the script changes from filming to the final release? Yeah, going from like writing to filming, I, I, I remember sitting down with Jamie and just talking about a lot of character stuff and 
uh, before we started shooting. And it was interesting. I, I remember him telling me like how he envisioned the character and how I'm playing it different. And there's a whole part of the character that was removed from the final cut, um, which is that he chews tobacco in the film. Um, there's a there's a few scenes that had it in it, and uh, they just uh, cut around it basically, which was really cool because they um, they made me. I, well, uh, hold on, I'm not. I don't mean to say this in a negative way. Um, <laughs> I had to chew, you know, fake chewing tobacco, which was disgusting. Uh, it got stuck in my teeth and stuff, and I was like, it's all for the work, and it wasn't in the cut. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's all good because it just didn't work for the character and I totally agree and understand that. Um, but it's interesting going from uh, just what he was in the script, which I feel is very similar but with, uh, with some minor differences. So it was fake chewing tobacco and it still tasted bad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was, I mean, taste, it's, it's not really, they put the, is this cayenne peppers in there? to like simulate the tobacco, yeah. Um, and it was, and then it would get like stuck in my teeth and my gums. It's, uh, yeah, just don't do any kind of chewing tobacco anyway, any, at all. That's my advice. Listen to him. <laughs> okay, um, and to wrap it up, you guys kind of touched on this last night, but I thought it would still be a great question to wrap up the interview. Mm -hmm. What main themes and ideas would you like audiences to take away from your character and the film overall? One thing I'd like people to not take away from it or f to learn from is uh, Ethan and Derek's kind of display of masculinity or what they think that should be uh, with them trying to hide crying from each other. I think that's very, um, I think it's very destructive and I, I think that people should be able to freely express their emotions to, especially to someone as close as your brother. And you don't need to always be um, that strong person you can you can be vulnerable and I think with well with the right people but yeah, I think people should uh, be more open to that absolutely yeah I really enjoyed seeing those scenes as someone who also grew up in a family where we maybe didn't always yeah. talk about our emotions you guys portrayed that perfectly and I think that's why people are gonna resonate with the film so much hope so well thank you so much for doing this interview of course. I really appreciate it absolutely make sure Anytime. to watch stay awake <laughs> do that please <laughs>